All right. Uh, we do have an aggressive agenda tonight, so we're going to keep uh, just close as we can to our time schedules. And with that, we're already about two minutes tardy for our next VIP guest, Cece Doucette, for Electromagnetic Fields presentation. Thank you, Cece. Thanks for coming tonight. Nice to have you back. Please. Sure. Thank you for having me in tonight to share some information on wireless technology and the biological risks that it brings. For those of you who are new to the board, first, thank you very much for giving your time and service to our town. And second, I would just like to give you a little bit of background on this issue. I used to be the president of the Ashland Education Foundation. And as such, I ran seven campaigns to bring technology into the Ashland Public Schools. And then I went on to become the grant coordinator for the district, and in that role I managed our government grants. But I also developed a relationship with Donors Choose, which is crowdsourcing for teachers. And we were so proud of the fact that we got over a thousand, or I'm sorry, over a hundred grants wow. sponsored for iPads, Chromebooks, uh, smart boards, smart TVs, minis, what we thought was all this great new technology we were hearing that our district needed to have for the 21st century classroom. And then one night at book group, a girlfriend of mine who's an electrical engineer was reading a book called Zapped, and she just kind of tipped us off that it looked like there could be some biological effects from wireless technology. So I went to our then IT director at the schools, Alan Graham, and he and I had worked together for years on all these campaigns. And I said, what do you know about biological harm from Wi-Fi? And he said, never heard of it, let me go check. And he came back and said, the FCC says it's fine. I'm a technical and professional writer by trade, so part of my skill set is doing research. So I began to investigate. And if one does a cursory search on is Wi-Fi safe, you will find studies that show we did these studies, no harm was found. But when you get beyond that, when you actually get to the scientific studies, you will find there are many, many biological effects from wireless radiation. There's a compendium report called the Bioinitiative Report, and this has been updated since the last time we spoke. In the end of 2017, in December, uh, Dr. Henry Lai updated this with the current scientific studies through 2017. And just a quick run through of the key scientific evidence of harm, damage to sperm and reproduction, children are more vulnerable, fetal and neonatal effects, effects on autism, electrohypersensitivity, uh, effects on the blood-brain barrier, which is being linked to a lot of the neurological issues that children are having today, effects on brain tumors, genotoxicity, neurotoxicity, cancers, melatonin, Alzheimer's disease, and uh, a few other more technical things here. So when Ashland Public Schools began to do their investigation of this, they of course saw the industry-funded studies that showed no evidence of harm. They also saw the non-industry-funded studies, and they didn't quite know what to do with that. They're not scientists, they're not doctors. We looked to the Department of Public Health for advice. They were not aware of this issue. We looked to the Board of Education for advice. They were not aware of this issue. But when Ashland Public Schools read the fine print that comes with all of our devices, and for anybody who owns an iPhone, if you go into settings, scroll a little ways down to general. Mr. Featherston, do you want to follow along? I'm going to do it right live okay. here, yes. So go to settings. Settings, a little ways down is general. I just ask my kids, I'm an idiot when it comes to <laughs> <laughs> General, okay. At the top, you'll see about. Okay. And all the way down is legal, second from the bottom. Wow, she just this memorized. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just remember the acronym GAL, like this GAL taught you how to go into general about legal from your settings. And at the bottom of legal is RF exposure. That's radio frequency radiation or two way microwave radiation, which the industry politely calls energy. And if you read that fine print, it tells us two really important things. One, keep this device X amount of distance from your body. And Mr. Featherston, I think if you look at like maybe the bottom of the second or third paragraph, it gives you a distance there. I think in the iPhone it's like five millimeters. When worn or carried within five, 
separation. Millimeter too. separation. Yeah. 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 So, so and it then actually it, states it. Yeah, I never knew that. I know, and, and who would even know to look right. five layers into your phone for a legal sure. disclaimer? Um, but it also says another really important guidance, and that is to use a hands-free option. Because simply by holding a device in active mode in your hand, you're exceeding the FCC guidelines. We don't even have standards. These are just guidelines for public radiation exposure. So those FCC guidelines were set in the 90s this high based on a thermal theory saying, okay, how much heat from one device would it take to raise the temperature of our biological cells? We have no safety testing. That was never safety tested for anybody. Worse, the science today is showing that there are great biological effects at the non-thermal level, so you don't have to have heat to have harm. And the uh, IEEE, which is a professional organization for engineers and electrical engineers and electronic engineers, they put out a report in 2016 called Some Weak Effects of Magnetic Fields on Biological Systems. Radio frequency fields can change radical concentration and cancer cell growth rates. So even the IEEE, which helped to inform those FCC guidelines back in the 90s, is acknowledging this is biologically active. So when Ashland Public Schools read that fine print, we became the first in the nation to even have a sign hanging in our classrooms with some precautionary measures. One turn off the routers when we're not using them, otherwise they continually pulse microwave radiation at our staff and our children. Two, turn off your device or at least put it in airplane mode. When you put it in airplane mode, it shuts off the five or six antennas that are in there. So your one device has a cell antenna, a data antenna, a Bluetooth antenna, a Wi-Fi antenna, a locator antenna, and likely by now they're taking advantage of you and using it as a public hotspot as well. Mm -hmm. All six of those are continually pulsing for a handshake with the nearest cell tower or router. We don't need that, but we don't know about it. So we could keep it in airplane mode when we put it on our body, because even the manufacturers say, keep it off your body, and that would reduce our exposure greatly. Um, so that's how I got involved in this. I was very, very proud of Ashland Public Schools for doing this, but right now it's just a sign. Our schools are not doing this. They're waiting for higher authorities to teach them what to do. So I met with Senator Karen Spilka, and I explained to her what this technology looks to be uh, bringing us as far as risk goes, and I measured her cell phone and her district director's laptop. And this is a radio frequency radiation measurement device, about $400, and it allows us to detect the microwave radiation in our spaces. And as you can see here, just from the ambient Wi-Fi that we have in the building and the individual devices that we're all carrying, we're in the red zone. And this is set to biological limits for where the science is showing there is harm. Um, with gratitude to our selectmen and to our library board, we are the first in the nation to have one of these on loan in the Ashland Public Library. Any of you can take it home for a week and measure your exposures and then learn what to do. Can I bring my phone over there, see what mm -hmm. it does? Would that be in a safe zone if you were just outside? Um, no, we that? have so much ambient radiation today that you're hard pressed to be outside and find an area that doesn't have electromagnetic radiation. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, that, that was actually so was say, if okay, you would weird, do like, something like, control, like right. because, I mean, it, yeah, do or just go in and do what you would normally do. Yeah, so it, it jumps. And the reason why it jumps around like that is regular radio and TV waves, they roll off of a continuous rolling sine wave. And unless you happen to be under the broadcast tower and you're getting an extreme dose, our bodies can acclimate to that fairly well. But with digital technology, in addition to that sine wave, there's a square wave that rides on that. And it's, it's sending data packets via microwave radiation in these pulse pulsed, spiked, erratic shots that continually hit our cells. And that is what the science is showing is part of what the biological harm is. So 
In the last year, we have had some major breakthroughs. The California Department of Public Health released a long-held fact sheet that they wrote in 2009, and it was suppressed by industry. It took a lawsuit from a professor at UC Berkeley to get this fact sheet released and out to the public. And that's been almost 10 years, and so many people have already died of the glioblastomas, the acoustic neuromas, the salivary gland tumors, the thyroid tumors. So it's urgent that we get this information out to the public. In the Mediterranean country of Cyprus, in December, their entire medical community made an EMF, or electromagnetic field declaration. And they have put out a 16-point bulletin to the public to teach them to use today's technology safely until the industry brings biologically safe mobile technology to market. The United States National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences houses the National Toxicology Program. They have been working on a $25 million study, the biggest one they've ever done. And in the spring of 2016, they had initially gone in hoping to find cell phones are safe. In 2016, when they did their first set of peer review, or their first set of analysis, they found DNA damage, brain tumors, and heart tumors. Statistically enough that they tried to tell the FCC, they tried to tell the FDA, which commissioned the study, and they tried to tell the public, but it never made it to us. They did their peer review of the full study this spring, and they took a vote and declared that this is a clear carcinogen. That's the National Toxicology Program. Others will say, oh, but you need to have multiple studies showing the same thing. Well, right on the heels of the NTP study, the Ramazzini Institute in Italy found the same findings in another very large study. And then this uh, year, in 2018 as well, Dr. Martin Paul put together a report on the studies that have been done on Wi-Fi, because people will say, oh, Wi-Fi is different from cell phones. Well, it's all in the same microwave radiation spectrum. It all sends data through digital pulse. So Dr. Martin Paul, Paul has put in another study on Wi-Fi that's very well sourced. Then, right after that, Ramazzini and NTP study came out, The Nation, which I understand is our country's oldest magazine, put out an investigative report, how big wireless made us think that cell phones are safe. And what they uncovered is back in the 90s, the industry itself conducted their own studies, found it to be carcinogenic, and that children are more vulnerable, and they did not invoke the precautionary principle. They suppressed it and got the Telecom Act passed. Harvard published a similar report more extensively in 2015 called Captured Agency. So we have a lot of new information that should propel us forward to be protecting our citizens, especially our children, our fetuses, the elderly, and those with existing health conditions, because the science is clear. We are at risk. And um, Senator Spilka introduced a bill on my behalf last session. This session, she reintroduced it under her own name. Senator Julian Sear out of the Cape and the Islands introduced two bills to raise that fine print so we all know, so we can have a right to choose how we use our technology. When Senator Sears' bills came before the Joint Committee on Consumer Protection and Professional Licensure, there were testimonies sent in from all over the world, from scientists, from doctors, from public health experts, from people here in Massachusetts who have become electrically sensitive. They did something very unique. The Joint Committee on Consumer Protection assigned one of their research analysts to this issue, and they did the deep dive. And then they wrote their own bill. So we now have two bills advancing through the Senate right now that would form a commission to get the right bright minds together at the state level to examine the non-industry funded science and decide how we're going to protect the public. Um, and I also wanted to mention, because you are the Board of Health, our state level Department of Public Health has written four fact sheets on this. They have one for uh, Wi-Fi, they have one for cell phones, they have one for cell towers, and they have one for high voltage power lines because in Replinsky's district in Natick, there's a cancer cluster around wow. those high voltage power lines.
So we are very well poised to bring this to the public, but we know that public policy takes time to catch up with the science. And in the meantime, we should be thinking long and hard about how we can pre protect ourselves in our homes, in our public spaces, and most especially our children in our schools. We should not start another school year with wireless radiation in Ashland Public Schools. Okay, um, I wanted to share with you that some other towns are also tuning into this. The town of Wayland has recently uh, pushed off a cell tower that they wanted to put in near their rod and gun club. They have also decided at town meeting not to install wireless water meters because they continually pulse microwave radiation 24 seven with your cell phone, with your tablet, you have a choice, you can turn that off. But when the industry puts a device on your home that's pulsing radiation 24 seven, you don't have a choice in that. And if we don't get ahead of this issue quickly, the industry's next step is for 5G and the internet of things. 5G has the crummy end of the spectrum with the millimeter waves. We've already used up the good spectrum with 3G and 4G. With 5G, they're promising great speeds. Everything will be connected, but it can't travel very far. So what they want to do is put in additional infrastructure. The existing cell towers won't go away. They want to add cell towers inside our neighborhoods, every two to 12 houses, on street level poles in the public access right of way. And they're working feverishly at the federal and the state level to take away local municipal rights to say if or where we want any of this technology in our town. So we need to learn about this and we need to learn about it quickly because their deep pockets have a lot of influence. And if we don't, we're gonna find ourselves with a cell tower right outside our bedrooms. We could go on all night, and you know, thank you as always for your great presentations. I think you, you you give some of the best presentations that we see every year, and thank you for all the hard work. And but I want to give the board an opportunity, and, and only because we have such an aggressive agenda, yeah. I want to just keep it to, like you know, if you guys want to each ask a question because I think it's topical, and then uh, we can if we can wrap up. But we'd love to have you back too. But okay, thanks. You guys have any direct questions? Just, just in general, do the do the articles give you a relative rate of increase in whatever diseases you know cancer or things yeah, versus that's, baseline that's an excellent question um, the american cancer society is reporting now that our young adults are seeing a double and triple fold increase in colon cancers rectal cancers we're seeing breast cancers on the rise we're seeing a rise in the brain tumors in children as well um, what the industry will do to spin that is to say, oh, cancers are not rising. They'll do an average. But when you look at specific cancers from where we carry these devices, you will see significant increases. That's very, yeah. wow. Thank you. Eye-opening. I know. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate your passion. Mm -hmm. um, you're clearly very passionate. We've communicated uh, via Facebook a few times. Mm -hmm. And um, just... I, I think that as a member of the Board of Health, mm -hmm. I support 100% providing factual information to citizens of the Commonwealth and, uh, and of our town in specific. I think it's really very important, and I agree with you too in terms of where the industry itself would use their pockets to, mm -hmm. to hide information, because we've seen that in every other industry, in the drug industry, in the, in the tobacco industry, for mm -hmm. sure. I do think, though, it's really important when appealing to the public to be very transparent about the sources of information mm -hmm. and, and to, <coughs> to show them that they're, because, I mean, with any topic, you can go, like you mentioned, Googling uh, yeah. Wi-Fi, I can, do, I can take any topic, mm -hmm. any topic at all, and Google it, and find a million things that will tell you how bad it is, and a million things that tell you how good it is. Mm -hmm. and, and this is probably one of those topics. It that's, definitely that's is, and it's the big tobacco playbook all yeah. over again, and that's what they're banking on, is if they can create doubt yeah. and seduce the public with their sexy products, then we will sit there and say, oh, it must be all right, so we keep using it but at great peril. We're already seeing escalations in autism, ADD, ADHD. We have never had children hospitalized for social and emotional issues like we have today. And the science is very clear 
that wireless radiation hits the central nervous system especially hard. So I agree, balance is very important, but don't be lulled into a false sense of security. When this uh, meeting segment is posted on WACA TV, I will put it up on my YouTube channel and I will put links into all of the science that I brought forth tonight. Mm -hmm. And I tell everybody, don't take my word for this. Mm -hmm. Go out there and do your own independent research and then see what you might like to do to reduce your exposure. Mm -hmm. um, and I will leave each of you with a packet of information. Uh, if I might grab it real quickly. Well, do, do you, I, I just want to make a statement, uh, and CC, as you know, I get very emotional about this subject, I know. and I agree with what Chris said, and I agree with what you said, and I live it. I live in a household where my two children are 16 months apart, same mother, same father, same diet, same household, you know, and one of my sons struggles with autism, uh, and it's a struggle. And my other son's probably going to rule the world one day. And, uh, and everything is the same but that. And it goes to Chris's point, I think, is that the metals in my son with autism are off the chart. My other son is typically normal. So there is something, I, I want to say, Wi-Fi triggers something in the environment to affect the kids. And I don't know if it's prescriptions or immunizations or anything like that. But I do applaud you for the fact that you sit there and said to tonight that uh, it doesn't affect everybody, but it does affect yeah. people. And it doesn't affect everybody who's affected the same. Right. So we're all very much individually biological beings. So. And um, I appreciate the fact that you just try to educate people. Absolutely. You're, you're not, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, you're not so, preaching a ban of. No, uh, ban no, no, no. Right. In my packet, I'll give you my business card, and on the back is my personal research repository. I got way in over my head with this, and I couldn't find stuff that I had wanted to share. So I've categorized it and put it online. I'll also give you a card from Dr. Hugh Taylor, who's the head of OBGYN at Yale. And he has done some of the science. He's seen what happens to mice and their pups when you expose them to wireless radiation. And he has built a program called the Baby Safe Project, which anybody having children would be well advised to go take a look at that one. Um, Dr. Deborah Davis is a Nobel Peace Prize co laureate on climate change. She is passionate about this issue. She brought a panel of experts to the Massachusetts legislature in 2015. I suggest you look at her website, the Environmental Health Trust. And she introduced me to folks in the UK who were building online training for this. I lent my tech writing skill set and became a member of wirelesseducation.org. It's a nonprofit. Literally in a half an hour, anybody can take this little course. It teaches you the science, the risks, and gives you a tip sheet for the medically recommended best, best practices for wireless safety. There's also an excellent film that was screened at the Ashland Public Library, and it's being screened around the uh, state. It will come out July 10th for the public to purchase. It's called Generation Zapped. It's an excellent way. It's non-threatening. It's not hysterical. It's just a lovely way to hear from the doctors and scientists and patients about the risks of this. And then lastly, a packet that includes the press release uh, that was done initially. We now have an eighth bill. Um, and then information from the Ramazzini study, Dr. Paul's Wi-Fi study, and then a fact sheet that kind of helps people to walk through, well, the industry says it's fine. I'll give you the information on that in here. So thank you all for your time. Mary? I just, wanted, I just wanted to say thank you for bringing it to our attention as residents and you know, yeah. members. I think it's a, yeah. a lot of information to digest. Oh. It is. I tell people, go home and freak out for 10 minutes while your head spins <laughs> as you notice everything wireless around you. Then come back to the table and let's figure out one by one what can you do to perhaps make a safer choice. Right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's always Thank nice you. to have you here. Thank you for doing all the hard work. Thank you. 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 Thank you.